फ्रेंड्स वी हैव ए प्रॉब्लम विच इज बेस्ड ऑन कोप्लेनर नॉन कॉन्करेंट फोर्सेस सो लेट मी रीड द क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट ए डैम इज सब्जेक्टेड टू थ्री फोर्सेस 50 किलो न्यूटन फोर्स ऑन द अपस्ट्रीम वर्टिकल फेस ए बी फोर्टी किलो न्यूटन फोर्स ऑन डाउन स्ट्रीम इंक्लाइन फेस एंड इट्स वेट ऑफ वन फोर्टी किलो न्यूटन एज शो इन द फिगर सो लेट मी शो यू द फिगर फ्रेंड्स फर्स्ट So if you look at here, so there is a dam over here. A, B, C, D represents a dam. So there is a vertical face of the dam and there is a inclined face of the dam. So as per this question, the dam is subjected to three forces. One is 50 kilo newton force, which is acting on the upstream vertical face. So this is the upstream vertical face AB. 40 kilo newton force on downstream inclined face. So this is the CD. Is the downstream inclined face, and on that face, there's a 40 kilo newton force acting due to due to water on this particular side, and this particular force is 40 kilo newton, and its own weight. So its own weight means the weight of the dam is 140 kilo newton. So the weight of the dam is acting downward, which is given as 140 kilo newton. So I'll write down this as 140 kilo newton. This 140 kilo newton is basically the weight of the dam, which is acting downward. Okay. So on vertical face, we have 50 kilo newton force acting. on the inclined face we have 40 kN force acting and the weight of the dam which is 140 kN is acting downward okay so these three forces are acting on this particular dam a b c d right so now we have to find the single equivalent force and we have to find the single equivalent force and we have to locate its point of intersection with the base ad This is the base AD of the dam, so we have to find a single equivalent force of this. It means we have to find the resultant force, as well as we have to locate at what point it is going to act. So we have to locate its position with respect to the base AD, where it is going to intersect the base AD. That particular location we need to find. So if you observe the system carefully, friends, these three forces, which is 50 kN. 140 kN and 40 kN these three forces are not concurrent forces because if you extend their line of action like this friends like this if you extend their line of action friends you will know that they are going to intersect at different different point these two are going to intersect over here while these two forces are going to intersect over here so they are not going to intersect at the same point it means these three forces are not concurrent forces okay so they are definitely they are in the same plane so they are coplanar forces but not concurrent forces so this is a system of coplanar non concurrent forces so we have to find the resultant force as well as its location with respect to base ad so where the resultant force is going to intersect the base ad so as we know that for a coplanar non concurrent forces there will be resultant force as well as there will be resultant moment so first we'll find out resultant force of the given system of forces so let's go for solution So we'll first find out the resultant force of the given system of forces. The first one is to find the resultant force. So we call resultant forces F R. So to find resultant force, friends, we will resolve each forces along x and y direction. So let's resolve each force along x and y direction. So I'll be considering this as x direction and the vertical as y direction. So we'll resolve each and every force along x and y direction. So let me resolve. So this is already in x direction, friends. So we we'll list down each and every force. So here I am representing force that is F. Here we'll be having x component of the force, and here we'll be having y component of the force. So we have three forces. One is 50 kN. This is this force is 50 kN. We have got this one. The next one is let's say this. That is 140 kN. The weight acting downward this is 140 kN. And the third one is This one 40 kN. These are three forces we have. All all are in the kN. Okay. Now we'll try to resolve this force 50 kN along x and y direction. So if you look at here, it is already in the x direction. Okay. So since it is in x direction, we don't have any y component over here. So it is acting towards right. So towards right we are taking positive. This is positive, friends. And this is positive. Upward is positive like this. And downward is negative. Or towards right is positive. And towards left will be negative as per sign convention. 50 kN is acting towards right. This will be positive, so we'll have positive 50 kN. 
there is no y component in this particular force so zero now if i take 140 kilo newton it is acting downward so downward will be negative so so downward is the y direction basically right vertical is the y direction and it is acting downward so it will be negative so 140 will be minus 140 here because it is acting downward direction and there is no x component to it so it will be 0 kilo newton we can say now this 40 kilo newton which is this one this we will have to resolve and we will have to find out its component now since this angle is 60 degree you can see here the angle made by cd with the horizontal is 60 degree so if i try to resolve it along x direction also like this let's see so this angle is 60 degree so by default this angle is also 60 degree so now i can resolve this 40 kilo newton along x direction as well as y direction we can resolve in the horizontal direction like this so this is the x component of it and similarly we can resolve in the vertical direction like this this is going to be the y component of it right so this is x component and this is y component so the y component which is this one which is acting downward would be 40 and this angle is 60 so it will be 40 cos 60 this will be 40 cos 60 degrees and this will be obviously sine because this is cos so this will be sine this will be 40 sine 60 degrees so we are able to resolve this particular force along x direction which is 40 sine 60 and along y direction which is 40 cos 60 so i'll write down that also here now so 40 the x component is this one which is 40 sine 60 and it is acting towards left so it is negative so minus 40 sine 60 and this one which is acting downward is 40 cos 60 again downward is negative so minus 40 cos 60 so if you can see here we have resolved the entire system of forces along x and y direction okay now we will have to find the resultant force that is fr so now from here we can find out the summation of fx that is summation of forces in the x direction so if you add these values you will get summation of fx and we can also find out the summation of fy so if you add these values summation of fx will be 15.359 kilonewton so it is 15.359 kilonewtons you will get friends and similarly if you add these values friends you will be getting the summation of fy as minus 160 kilonewton so we got the summation of fx and summation of fy so summation of fx is coming in as a positive value while summation of fy is coming as negative value friends so x is positive and y is negative it means it is going to be in the fourth quadrant okay it is going to be in the fourth quadrant something like this you can say this is x and this is y for instance so your force is going to come in the fourth quadrant something like this quadrant is going to come okay because x is positive it is coming x is positive while y is negative okay your force may be coming somewhere here in the fourth quadrant somewhere like this okay that is resultant force will come somewhere here okay so we'll see the what at what angle it is inclined this angle we have to find we'll see this angle also but just for basic understanding kindly keep in mind that your resultant force is going to come in the fourth quadrant because summation of fx is positive and summation of fy is negative now let's find out the resultant force first so the resultant force which is fr is given by a simple expression which is summation of fx square plus summation of fy square and if you substitute these values over here so it is going to be 15.359 square plus minus 160 square so from here the value of resultant force would be coming as 160.735 kN this is the magnitude of resultant force we got friends now we have to find the direction of this particular resultant force to find the direction of the resultant force basically we would like to find this angle theta at what angle the force is inclined with the horizontal direction with the horizontal axis so direction theta is given by tan inverse of summation of fy divided by summation of fx so that will give you theta as tan inverse of fy is can say 160 i'm just taking magnitude of it and that is 15.359 okay so if you simplify this so angle theta would be coming as 84.5 degrees 84.5 degrees so we got the magnitude of resultant force of the system of forces as well as we got its direction so this theta which is over here it is 84.5 degrees this we got as 84.5 degrees friends okay as we know that the summation of fy is negative and summation of fx is positive so it is coming in the fourth quadrant so resultant force is going to act somewhere in this direction okay 
Now, if you look at here, this resultant force which is acting at an angle 84.5 degree is going to cut this particular base AD at some point. So, let us say this is the resultant force which is FR. So, this resultant force FR is going to intersect the base AD at certain point. Okay. So, from point A it will be at certain distance. So, this resultant force will be at certain distance from point A. So, this is point A friends. So, if I extend like this, if I draw a line like this perpendicular line, so it will be acting at certain distance from point A, let us say at D. So, the moment caused by this resultant force about point A will be same as the moment caused by the system of forces as we know. Okay. So, from there I can find out the distance of this particular resultant force from point A. So, so friends the next part is we have to find the location of this particular force with respect to point A. So, that is what we will calculate. So, the second part is the part B is to calculate the distance of distance of resultant force FR from point A. So, we are going to calculate this particular distance. So, to calculate that, so before calculating that particular part, we will find out the resultant moment first. So, I will find out the summation of moment, resultant moment of forces okay, with respect to point A. So, I am going to find out the resultant moment of this all these forces with respect to point A. So, now if you look at here, if I take this point A, so with respect to point A, this 50 kN is going to cause a clockwise moment, something like this, friends. Okay. This 50 kN uh, force will try to rotate the dam in the clockwise direction, so it is positive. So 50 kN into 2 is going to be the moment due to this particular force, 50 kN. So it is going to be like this, friends, positive 50 into 2 because it is clockwise, so I have written positive. Now, this weight which is acting for 140 kN is acting downward. So, about point A, it is going to rotate the dam in the clockwise direction again like this, in this direction friends. Okay. So, this will also cause a clockwise moment which is 140 time into distance is 2 meter. So, it is again positive 140 into 2 now. So, here we have got two forces, one is downward and one is acting towards left. So, we need to find out the distance. So, what I will do is I will draw, I will extend this line over here. Okay. Now, here if you see, and if I extend this line like this friends, so this angle is 60 degrees and this angle is also 60 degrees you can see and this length is 2 meters as we have, we have seen here 2 meters. So, this length is going to be from here to here, this length is going to be friends, this length is going to be 2 cos 60 and this distance is going, this distance is going to be 2 sin 60. So, now we got this distance as well as this distance. Okay. Now, this force which is 4 cos 60 will rotate the dam in the clockwise direction and it is going to pass like this vertical downward. So, the dam is going to rotate in the clockwise sense in this way friends. Okay. So, from A to D this overall distance is from here to here D this distance is 6 meters friends. Kindly remember this. This whole distance is 6 meter. Okay. So, now we can calculate the distance from here to here is going to be 6 minus this is 2 cos 60. So, this is going to rotate the beam in the clockwise sense. The force is 40 cos 60 so plus again clockwise. So, 40 cos 60 and the distance is the overall distance from here to is 6 meters. So, 6 minus 2 cos 60. So, 6 minus 2 cos 60. Okay. So, this part is over now. So, we have got moment of this particular force and now we would like to find the moment of this particular force. So, it is going to rotate the dam in the anti-clockwise sense because it is acting like this. So, about this point it is going to rotate, it is going to rotate the dam in this direction, it is anti-clockwise direction, so it is going to be negative. So, 40 sin 60 into this distance, so this distance is nothing but 2 sin 60, okay. So, minus 40 sin 60 into distance is, this distance friends from here to here, that is 2 sin 60, okay. So, now we got moment of all the forces, this force moment, this force moment, moment due to this component uh, and moment due to this component, okay. So, all the components we got. Now, we can find out from here summation of moment about point A. Okay. So, now we can find out the resultant moment about point A. So, if you calculate this, you will get the value of the resultant moment of forces about point A will be summation of MA will be equal to 420, 420 kilonewton meter. Okay. So, now if you want to find the distance, this particular distance, so D is given by summation of moment about point A divided by the resultant force. Okay. So, if I do it, it is going to be 4 to 0 divided by the value is 160.735. This value will be 2.613 meters. So, 2.613 meters. So, the resultant force FR is going to act at a distance of 
2.613 meters from point A. So, this D is going to be 2.613 meters. So, like this you can find out the, the resultant force as well as its location with respect to point A. Thank you very much.